Hello everyone, my name is Sascha Hein and I'm here in our research office in Freiburg, Germany and boy, have we got news for you. So, let's jump right in. So this is the brand new elabprime.com webpage. I know this has been overdue since quite some time, but finally, here it is. This is your portal to answer all your questions about eLab, what it is, how it works, how to implement it into your daily practice and learn what it can do for you and for your business. So there you have it, the brand new elabprime.com webpage. Check it out. All right, so what else is new? This is the latest version of eLab Prime. This is the 2.0 release, which is available as per today for free upgrade to all of our existing eLab Prime customers. I just want to give you a quick rundown of how eLab Prime works, what its new features are, and especially also for those of you who haven't had yet the chance to collect a lot of experience with eLab or perhaps who have never tried it. We have tried to make the software as easy and as intuitive to use as possible based on our experience over the last five years since we started eLab. So you begin by creating a new case. You can simply click here and then this window comes up and eLab Prime wants you to enter a patient name. So we're going to use a fictitious patient called John Doe for a fictitious dentist called Dr. Feelgood. And then you click on save. And this way, all of your cases are neatly organized and easy to find later on as you're accumulating more and more cases. The next thing you have to do is you need to import an image that you need for your case. And you have to make sure that these are raw files. They can't be uh, JPEGs or anything. They have to be raw files. And you can import those images into Prime directly through Finder by accessing the SD card from your camera. So you select the image that you want to work with and then you click on open and Prime is going to import this image now. And once this is done, there is nothing else to do. There's no need to calibrate the image. There's no need to click on the image. You are ready to jump right in and to measure tooth color to get a patient personal mixing recipe. In order to do that, you simply click on measurement, select the tooth that you want to copy, which is the two one here and then Prime is going to generate a mixing recipe based on that. So what's new in Prime? What is new in this version? Well, we have built in a couple of really cool new features. The first thing is easy to find. You just click on the ceramic drop-down menu and you will see immediately that we're now supporting a bunch of new ceramic systems, including the Celtra Ceram, the Vita VM9, and now also two metal ceramic systems, the Creation CC, and the IPS in style. Um, another thing that we have added is you can now choose which framework material to use from which manufacturer. So you simply click on framework, there's a drop down menu that pops up and you can select the framework materials from a bunch of different manufacturers. If you happen to have the one from Ammon Gearbach in stock or the Zirkin Sand in stock, then you can select that and the mixing recipe will be adjusted accordingly. Now, let's just go back to selecting IPS Emacs Ceram, which is one of the most popular ceramic systems that is being used in Prime. Now what you can do is you can combine your experience and your intuitive perception with this mathematical process by having the choice of selecting different framework materials for a given case. So in this case, for instance, you could copy this color on those four different framework materials out of the six that we support. Okay, um, so let's say if you didn't want to do this with LTA2, perhaps because you're concerned about some mild discoloration, you could just choose MO0 instead and the mixing recipe will be adjusted accordingly, right? So that's quite neat that, you know, you can now combine this process with your intuitive perception. Another thing that we did is, upon popular request, we brought back the functionality of the eLab Pilot. And to activate this, all you have to do is you click on the manual button here, and then as you move your cursor into the image, you are now measuring LAB values again, just like in the old Lightroom days. 
You can vary the size of the measurement aperture by holding down the command key and pressing on the arrow up key, that makes it bigger, or on the arrow down key, and that makes it smaller. And this is really important because many times I saw people trying to quantify tooth color based on only a very few pixels on an image or with a pipette or something like that, where you really don't know how large of an area you are measuring. You want to measure an area that is representative of the dentin color, okay? And when you're happy with that, you just click and then the LAB values are frozen and your mixing recipe is adjusted accordingly. And you can measure in two separate areas with two separate measurement apertures if you want. You just vary the size, select the area of interest, and you just click. And here are your LAB values, and this is the second mixing recipe. So why would you want to do that instead of using the automatic mode? Well, let's say if you are an experienced eLab user, and you've been using eLab for a long time uh, in the Lightroom days, for instance, then you might want to have the ability to measure colors manually instead of relying on the automatic measurement. But if you are starting out new with eLab, you're perfectly fine to just use the auto measurement tool and let Prime do the work for you. And then armed with the mixing recipe, you are now ready to formulate your um, stains and your ceramic. And uh, there's a more detailed video that you can watch on our webpage uh, www.elabprime.com which explains this process in more detail but basically you replicate the mixing recipes uh, that Prime gave you using the three stains mix it thoroughly first with uh, staining liquid and then once that is done you portion the um, dentin into it in this case Prime wants us to use BL1 from the Emacs range and mixing recipes are always designed for two scoops of those and then you empty them into, this, um, into the stains here, add your favorite build-up liquid, and then mix it thoroughly, and you are ready to start with your build-up. Uh, you don't need to stain your framework at all. You also don't have to use any uh, opacious dentin. Um, that's not necessary with uh, Prime. You just start straight with the dentin, do your cutback as per normal. I don't think you should change your uh, layering style. Add some mamelongs, um, enamels, uh, here we're imitating a bit of a crack that this case has. Add a halo to it and then pop it in the furnace and fire it. And then you need to take a photo of this after you've trimmed it and you place the crown on the simulation model. There's more information available on what that is uh, on, the, on our webpage as well. And then you take a photo and you're ready to go to the next step with Prime. And so this is the image already imported into Prime. And then uh, one of the coolest things that you can do with Prime is you can do a digital try-in. Um, in order to do that, you have to first select the clinical image, the one that you use for measuring the target shape. And then you simply click on try-in then this is the image that pops up, which is the model image. And notice that this has been photographed on the simulation model. Um, we're going to post the video very soon on the simulation model, what it is, how it works, and how to make one. But you can already find some more information on this uh, on our webpage. You select it, and Prime is going to isolate the crown. And now you can move that crown around. You can um, change its size. You can sort of change that. You can rotate it if you want it and the idea here is to try and to match it as good as possible into this image so that you can measure color you can compare the difference and you can also get a visual impression of how this could look if it was in the mouth although this is only after the first fire when you're happy with this you click on finish and then here is your digital try in um, Next, you want to analyze what the differences are so you get an idea of what you need to change. And for that, you simply click on Compare. Uh, click on the tooth first, the one that you wanted to copy, the 2-1. And then you click on the crown. And then this is the color difference. Um, 
As far as these areas are concerned, the blue areas, which is where the denting color is, this is kind of what you want after the first fire. You want your chroma to be pretty close, and, but you also still want to have a little bit of excess luminosity because you're likely to lose some of that with the next fire. And so the algorithm prime are constructed so that they formulate a mixing recipe that gives you a little bit of excess luminosity. Um, here in this area there, in the incisal area, you can see that um, Prime is not really comparing the same thing because in this case here we have these white patches, these fluorosis-like spots on the teeth which haven't been copied here yet. Okay, uh, And so here the automatic measurement can be misleading simply because the areas that it is comparing are not the same. So here for instance, if you wanted to, you could just basically um, use the manual mode instead. Uh, and click on an area where that is not obstructed by those white patches and then compare both areas and you can see that you know the delta E is immediately a lot smaller just simply because you know this is only after the first fire this character hasn't been um, added to it yet. Um, if you wanted to you could of course also measure the um, color difference manually in the surface area. When you do that make sure that your measurement area is large enough. You click on the tooth first and then you click on the crown and then there's only a very small difference between both measurements. Um, as far as these panels are here concerned, um, or you know, maybe perhaps this one here, this tells us what the color difference is and expresses these values in what we call the delta E. The delta E expresses the color difference between two objects numerically and um, we use a, uh, a ranking scale that comes from clinical dentistry. This was published by uh, Paravina et al. last year. And this ranks the delta E algorithm to uh, clinical relevance. So if your delta E value is between 0 and 0 0.8, then you have an excellent color match. But let me tell you, that's actually quite difficult to get. Um, and if that value is between uh, 0 0.8 and 1.8, you are well within the range of having a clinically acceptable result. And then the last thing we have to do is um, characterize that incisal area to copy the fluorosis with a bit of white myo stains before we take a photo. And then this is already the second digital try and the result after a bit of characterization, also a little bit of shaping and that. And um, you know, the, the incisal aspect has improved as, really, as far as the delta E is concerned and that's now ready to um, be completed and to be um, you know, sent out to the dental office. And then this is the final result uh, photographed in the mouth with the uh, gray reference card. Um, you know, the immediate sort of visual impression is very good. Uh, of course, we can compare numerically if we want to do this using quantification um, in the compare mode using the cross-polarized image first. And as you can see, that's a delta E 0 0.9, which is really uh, you know, quite excellent result. Um, this one here is the reflected image and you can measure the color here as well because of the um, artificial intelligence algorithm. It can detect uh, surface reflections and other things that don't belong to the tooth color, so you can, it can sort of measure around that. Uh, and here the delta E value is even uh, a little bit better, but in any case, um, very fine result that was achieved. Um, here's the, um, the show image, I guess, that was photographed with paper diffusers and, and that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, that's, that's basically how it's done. This is one example case of how to use the eLab protocol and eLab Prime uh, for a single anterior color match. And so I just want to um, quickly discuss uh, a few other aspects and you know give a few tips and tricks um, when getting started with eLab. One of the things that you really have to look out for with this protocol is you have to watch dehydration. Uh, dehydration is the most common cause for complications when it comes to implementing the eLab protocol to your daily workflow. Um, so with this particular case here, um, we took a picture of the preparation um, just before they were taking the impression. You can already see quite strong signs of dehydration on the teeth. And to exemplify this, I did a digital try-in comparing the uh, image that was taken with the provisional in place a few days later and uh, the picture I've just shown you. And you can very nicely see the effects of dehydration here um, on this measurement. And this is typically what tends to happen, which is that the luminosity increases and the yellow decreases 
and the teeth become less yellow and more blue as they dehydrate. So dehydration is really something that you have to look out for. Um, the real reason we took this picture was because you know, some of you probably have already wondered about stump shades and background colors, especially when it comes to using translucent materials like Emacs and that. So um, what you can do with Prime is you can measure the stump shade in one image and combine the information for a mixing recipe in another image. And I just want to quickly show you how that's done. Uh, because here, I mean, this is not a natural, uh, this is not natural dentin anymore. This is some fiber post and core, okay? So what you do is this. You basically pretend that you wanted to measure the color of the centrals while knowing that it's dehydrated so you can't use this information for anything. And then you go to the uh, to this tab here, you click on it, which is where you can normally select the ND shades from the natural dye material system from Ivoclar. And instead of choosing something pre-manufactured, you click on measure ND and then this new window comes up. And then you make an elliptical uh, circle like this here over the entire preparation and then Prime will measure the most common tooth color this area here which is that and then this is your stump shade pretty much it's recorded here right and then you go back to the image that you actually want to use for measuring the tooth color you click on measurement here do the same thing I just did then you go to the same tab here and now you go to measure ND and then you can select this here which says use last measured ND and this is how you can combine the measured stump shade from one image into another image. Okay, so this is basically how it's done. There is um, a photographic protocol chart on the um, eLab Prime webpage that you can download and you can pass this on to your clients to alert them about uh, the importance of preventing dehydration and also how to take the photo properly. All right, that's it from me. Thanks very much for taking the time to watch this tutorial. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any more questions, please don't hesitate to get in touch with me or otherwise visit our new webpage www.elabprime.com. Thanks very much.